Goedendag, Dumela, Sabona, Heta. My name is Lesoko and welcome to another scriptural deep dive. Fellowship City as a church believes in three things. We are gospel-centered, disciple-making, and transcultural. Because we are gospel-centered, we believe that everything we do should be firmly rooted in the scriptures. And that is why two weeks ago, Reino took us through one of our key distinctives, transcultural. He took transcultural church, he looked at where the scriptures say we should be a transcultural church and what that means for us. Today we're going to do the same. We're going to be looking at one of our key distinctives, everyone plays. We're going to be searching the scriptures to see what the scriptures say and what that should mean for us. We're going to be doing this looking at the book of Ephesians. Paul writes this letter while under house arrest. As he's writing it, the first six chapters, he breaks it up into two neat sections. The first three chapters is doctrine. It's based around the redemptive work of Jesus Christ for the descendants of Abraham through the Holy Spirit. Chapters four to six, he zones in on application because of the doctrine. On the screen, there will be scripture every now and then as we dig into it. I encourage you to follow along with me um, as we take this journey. From chapter one, we know that the Ephesians are followers of Jesus. He calls them the faithful saints. This we see in verse 15, chapter one. But Paul continues to pray for them. He prays that God would give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. What a prayerful, what a powerful prayer. If you don't know what to pray for, for us as a church, pray for that. Pray that our knowledge and wisdom of revelation of the knowledge of God would be ever true and would be ever growing. The beginning of chapter two, Paul starts zoning in on who they were before the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Paul says they were dead. They were dead in their transgressions and sins. They were spiritually dead and lifeless. As a corpse, they could do anything that a corpse could do to fix its relationship with anyone else, which is nothing. They were destined to receive, rightly so, the wrath the full wrath of God because of their sins. But God, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in our trespasses. You are saved by grace. That is what verse four and five of chapter two says. But God, who is in, who's rich in mercy, made a plan to redeem them back to himself. We are saved by grace, not by works, so or no one can boast. We see in verse 8, verse 8 says, For you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not from works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So there's no boasting. We could not contribute, the same as the dead corpse can contribute to anything. It was all the redemptive work of Jesus Christ for the descendants of Abraham through the Holy Spirit. This makes us ambassadors and this sets us on a path to being followers of Jesus. It gives us a purpose. God prepared for us good works for us to do. If you ever wondered what your purpose was, we see it here. He prepares good works for us to do. He creates us to be in relationship with himself and relationship with others in a perfect relationship. So he creates us for community and unity. He creates us to make much of himself. That's our purpose. I encourage you to watch out for videos in weeks to come of people within our community that speak about their purpose and action, how God has used them and their gifts 
to make much of himself. And I hope that would be of great encouragement to you as you watch those. So Paul continues to pray for their sanctification, for the work of the Holy Spirit to take root and transform them. He prays that they would be strengthened with power in their inner being through the Holy Spirit and that Christ would dwell in their hearts through faith. Therefore, chapter four, now we get to application. Therefore, because of all that I've said before, Paul says, therefore I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to walk worthy of the calling you have received with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. So Paul urges them to walk worthy of the calling they've received. Um, remember chapter two, verse 10, we are his workmanship. He created us to do work he prepared for us to do, to proclaim him, to make much of him, to show the world Christ. How? In humility, in gentleness, with patience, and bearing with one another in unity. And that says we're different. Why would we need to bear with one another? He calls us to be unified in our diversity. Also, he says God has given us gifts. These are different gifts with different roles for the function in one body. So chapter four, verse 11 to 16 says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work, to equip the saints for the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's son, growing into maturity with a stature measure by Christ's fullness. Then we will, we will no longer be like children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness in the techniques of deceit. But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head Christ, from him, the whole body fitted and knitted together by every supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body for building itself up in love by the proper working of each individual part. This is why everyone plays, because we all have different gifts. The list we see Paul mentions is not exhaustive. There will be more gifts that make up the body of Christ. All the gifts, gifts of hospitality, administration, prayer, compassion, generosity, and more, all form part of the body of Christ. Think of a rugby team with the ruck there. As the ruck is being formed, the forward line has got their job. The scrum half has got their job. This coach, the medic, and everyone around is all playing together for the glory of the team. And that is what we should do. All together, we all need it because each individual part plays together to build up the body of Christ. And that is why we all play. I encourage you to look out um, next week for more videos on our key messages. Next week, we look at missional communities. Um, we will have a message, also messages from the people of our community speaking about what it means to be in missional communities together. Grace and peace. Mm -hmm.